Yeah. Yeah, we'll get Larry Kemp is with us here this morning. Larry, good morning. We appreciate you hanging out uh, with us in this first break here. Well, good morning, and for sure and for certain, may God bless you all real good. Yeah, and uh, any thoughts on uh, what took place yesterday at uh, North Middle, Larry, and uh, from a greater perspective, anything the House of Delegates could do legislatively? Well, it's it's a tough nut, and uh, unfortunately, I think these situations are going to get worse. Uh, it only takes one rotten apple uh, to do something like that, and it's really interesting that this incident happened for somebody completely from another state. Uh, a 10-year-old. A 10-year-old. A 10-year-old. But 10-year-olds do stupid things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ten years old kids do do stupid things, but you think in this age of technology, there'd be a way to selectively block and that you could have access to certain numbers, you could have right. access to the parents, everything else would be blocked from, the, uh, from being transmitted. Well, not uh, lost in the uh, information there was Ron Stevens saying this is a 10-year-old who had done this before, so now you've got to look at the parents or whoever the adult is providing the phone and allowing this to continue and that's another story well the other problem we have is more and more when i grew up uh we had one car in our family dad worked uh and he ran a lot of the errands now we have both parents work sometimes two jobs and we have a lot of kids who just unsupervised and running wild that's a great point there was a, a cbs story this morning that this is the lowest percentage of at-home moms in the history of the country right now lowest percentage that we've ever had right at home mom at home dad whichever way uh, you measure that but there's nobody in the house you're right well i remember when i was 16 and my sister was 14 mom decided to go to work and she said it'll be fine uh because i'll be home about five o'clock and you get home from school about four o'clock but you know going into that into our home at four o'clock and mom not being there it was a difference mm -hmm. it was a big difference you got to beat up your little brother more Often. <laughs> uh, Larry, um, let's uh, get to some political stuff here. First and foremost, you've got a challenger once again uh, I, in, a, in I, a Republican primary. I do. Um, talked to him on the phone uh, just about a day or so after he he uh, he, he pre-filed. And uh, there's a little miscommunication. I didn't get his uh, email message at first, but we had a lo lovely conversation. Uh, I expect there may be one or more other challengers uh uh, in the primary, so it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, do you have any theories as to why you are routinely challenged in Republican primaries? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think because I'm an independent Republican, and uh, sometimes I will vote for or against bills that uh, are off the reservation because that's the. I always believe that principles over politics, and uh, sometimes we have some folks that say that, uh, oh, you ought to tote. The, the party line, and I say, I'll tote the party line when it agrees with my principles, and when it doesn't, I'll stand up and speak out. You had asked to come on the show to pontificate about the presidential situation on the Republican side of things, and even the, even the Democrat incumbent, so take a shot. Well, yeah, uh, I've been concerned about some of the people, some on, on this show, uh, that have, uh, and nationally, nationally, that have uh, pretty well think that uh, it's a done deal, that... Uh, Trump's going to be the Republican nominee, and Biden's going to be the Democrat nominee. And I don't think that's a done deal. A lot can happen between now. We haven't even had our first caucus and primary vote. Uh, so I think a lot can happen. Um, I'm con concerned about a lot of things. Uh, one of the things I watched intensely, uh, both the Republican uh, debate uh, recently and the, and the follow-up, uh, I was impressed with... Uh, Three, actually four, in a, in a sense, in, in the debate. Uh, I was surprised somewhat to see that uh, DeSantis didn't lose any standing in the, in the polling. Uh, I was surprised to see how well Nikki Haley did, and I was also surprised with, uh, and I think it's pronounced Vivek, uh, Vivek, not Vivek, Ramaswamy did. Uh, one of the sleepers that uh, uh, I, I think. I need at least to keep an eye on is the North Dakota governor. Uh, I think he's got a lot to say, and I was impressed that he had injured himself uh, playing basketball uh, and was in a lot of pain, but still came to the came to the debate. But the the, the thing that comes to my mind is uh, the depth of the field of uh, possible candidates, Republicans uh, uh, for presidential nominee. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is. People are saying, well, maybe Trump could be uh, have uh, 
DeSantis as a running mate or uh, uh, Haley could have uh, Tim Scott as a running mate. And the Constitution says uh, in Article 12 that you can't have two running mates from the same state. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that. So, Larry, what do you think? I mean, it's it's hard to tell now because we're in the midst of, of the storm in Florida. Sometimes people tend to um, really do well um, after a crisis, so to speak. And, of course, Ron DeSantis is in the middle of what could be a crisis um, and, and certainly um, is looking to be that way. Do you think that he will rise to the occasion? No pun intended. Um. (laughs) Well, that's interesting because I've been thinking about that and pondering about his response. Uh, Of course, he'd like to be on the trail. uh, But I think, with all things considered, if he does well in the crisis, I think that's going to help him. I, I, I really think that's going to help him because in my mind, and this is just my my opinion, and any candidate for president, I generally favor somebody that has some experience um, in as president or as a governor because they have administrative uh, experience. Those who've been a senator or a representative or just somebody from outside the, the mainstream of politics don't have the experience and haven't developed the skills that someone else uh, may have may have may have done so uh, I, I think this is going to help uh, DeSantis in the election whether uh, what happens in the end I don't know the other thing that I think people should keep in mind is don't pay as much attention as some do with the national polls these elections are done state by state with the electoral college and we haven't even had a caucus or a primary yet but the poll a lot of the polls have been uh targeting a particular state if you look at new hampshire right. look at iowa right. you can see and trump in both cases uh, and other states as well has a very commanding lead he does but you, you mentioned nikki haley a while ago uh and I, too, thought she had a very strong performance, but I thought her performance was directed toward a general election and not a primary election, and I just wonder if her remarks will come back to haunt her during the primary election. I I don't know. That's an an interesting take on it. I I was very impressed with her, Uh, and, of course, um, the only thing she said that I took some exception to, and it's a mild exception. I don't like her quote from Margaret Thatcher about uh, men say things and women do and but women do because things. Because you're a male. It plays it very well with women. It does. It does. Uh, Plus it's accurate. But, well, Just kidding. I'm, there, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, there's there, some truth there to that, Maria. There's <laughs> there, truth there you to go. It, yeah. But uh, I, I think you're right. She was playing on the general general election, yeah. not the primary. And I know, and uh, she got some build up, but she did not get the jump in in national rank and rating as I thought she would. Yeah, she's, I, I, she's still standing around somewhere between four percent and eleven percent. The high she's been eleven percent, and a lot of polls have her still at four to five percent. And even though Trump has a national uh, polling lead. Uh, I, I noticed that he did go down a little bit uh, because he, he was... It depends upon the polls. Yeah, it depends on the polls. Yeah, because other uh, polls has has him stand uh, the stand, stand, stand. And the, the, the other one that I've been looking at very closely, I've been a mayor of him for, for quite a long time, and he did not do any... I don't think he did himself any harm, but he didn't break out during the debate, is Tim Scott. I really like Tim Scott. Well, Tim Scott, I think, did himself damage. Uh, he yeah uh, look at the polls again he has dropped in the polls he's the one that's been the only one that's right. consistently been dropping the polls right after the debate so larry if there is a republican in the primary that you are most i would say partial to who would you say it is well um when the primary system first started um i i thought it was tim scott but i'm trying to keep my options open uh i was impressed with nikki haley mm-hmm. uh and uh, I was not so much surprised, uh, but a little bit, with Ramaswamy. Uh, I think Chris Christie, uh, he's just an attack dog against, uh, against Trump. Uh, the, uh, Asa Hutchison, the, the, the governor, I don't think did very well at all. But uh, initially, my, my, my favor was with Tim Scott, but... Uh, We'll see. It's a long time until the election, and it'll be a long time until May when when uh, West Virginia has a primary, and a lot can change then. Uh, the th- the thing that that comes in my mind, 
uh, a couple things. One is uh, I'm concerned about Biden's health, particularly his cognitive health, not his age, but his cognitive health. Uh, and uh, I'm concerned that if he'll make it through the second term or even through the through the term he has now, uh, and I'm not so sure what's going to happen with uh, with Trump uh, and all the indictments, both federal and state. And the big big concern I have is the bread and butter issues that most people are concerned about is just going to the side, uh, and all the talk is about impeachment with. Uh, uh, impeachment issues with uh, Biden and his son and what's going on there and the uh, uh, federal and state charges against Trump. And I don't think that's where the voters are. I think the voters are bread and butter issues. They want to know what's going on. And that's why I liked the uh, Republican uh, primary debate, because it brought out some of those issues uh, more, more clearly. So it's going to be interesting to me to see how the voters go that way. Have you been following uh, closely, Larry, the education issues in the state at the collegiate level in regards to uh, funding, financing, and such? We have the Senate Finance Chair, Eric Tarr, on in about uh, seven or eight minutes here. I have been following that, uh, and let me back up a little bit on, on that. And It's been sp- spoken about on your program by various people. I was very disappointed, uh, and oddly enough, I agree with John Doyle, uh, that I think that we have to have a constitutional amendment. Uh, the governor uh, called for that special session. We were waiting for it. We were expecting it, but we didn't actually get the call until a half hour till it came. And then there was over 40 issues, and that was ridiculous. Uh, there was three or four issues that were emergency issues. The rest of it was uh, w- was just a mess. Uh, I know I had a personal conversation with Speaker Roger Hanshaw, and uh, he was very frustrated by what was going on. But I was pleased that the House of Delegates went ahead and had full-blown committee hearings. The Finance Committee really did a yeoman's job, uh, and I'm on the Judiciary Committee. We did uh, a, a, a lot of work on those things, too. But uh, we worked through it, and it, it came out. And now I forget your original question. In, oh, in education regards issues. to WVU, for instance, uh, I, I know the, uh, there's a possible vote of no confidence for Gordon Gee coming up in, uh, in a week. Yeah, I've been getting a lot of emails from people across the state, which happens when you're in in, uh, in the legislature, uh, a concern about what's going on with West Virginia University. Uh, my take is the biggest success story, at least in the eastern panhandle, is the Blue Ridge uh, College situation. Uh, I think more and more of that needs to be done. Uh, when I was going to school, uh, you either went to college or that was it. Uh, apprenticeship programs and, and trade schools are really, really helpful. West Virginia University and the other universities, I think, that have declining enrollment. Uh, they've had overlap with case courses with other places, and I think there needs to be a correction in, in, in course. I haven't seen any legislative appetite to do anything. I was concerned about the $45 million to uh, Marshall University, which was kind of like that was out of the blue, and that could have waited through the legislative session. But we've been watching it real carefully, and it'll be interesting to see what happens when we go into session. The thing is, I've had people from West Virginia University saying, what's the legislature going to do with it now? Well, the legislature is not going to go back into session until January, unless the governor calls a special session, which I don't foresee. Larry, thanks so much for coming in this morning. We appreciate it. Appreciate your patience hanging out with us uh, while Ron Stevens in, uh, informed us of further of the incident yesterday at North Middle. I'm always patient, except when I'm not. Uh, say hello to the uh, bodacious Bob the Wonder Dog for us. Thank you. I know we couldn't make the trip with you this morning. No, he tried me. To, he tried to keep me home. <laughs> <laughs> and to your lovely wife, Cheryl. Thank you. As well. She says... She told me specifically, say hi to Rob. I really like Rob. And I says, well, I know. I said, I'm a little concerned about your taste, but then you married me. <laughs> I always liked Cheryl. She's, I think, a very smart woman. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day, Larry. Thank you.